So I've started a new side business with my camera calibration tool, which we're going to take a look at in this video here. I'm definitely going to create a bunch of videos here on the channel where we both use the tool, also vlogging videos where I'm working on it, basically just improving it, adding features and so on, and also just how we can use the tool, how I'm building a business from scratch. So this is just a side business that I've been working on for some time putting in the functionality, adding all the different versions, deploying it, building a web shop and so on. So we're definitely just going to cover that. So this is going to be a pretty cool video. Let's just jump straight into it and pull up one of the calibration boards. So I also have some calibration boards here in the background. I basically just did a couple of examples. So I basically just bought a couple of samples just to test it out and see how the boards work different materials, different prints and so on to see the quality. Also what I wanted to go with. Then I basically just ordered like a new bunch here, basically just going to receive a couple of packages here and there when they are sold out. I'm gonna basically just need to restock um, these boards. These are the calibration boards. This is really essential when we want to do camera calibration. We need very high quality and detailed calibration boards and we have different variations. I can also do custom boards. So this is one of the main ones. This is the Cheruka board. This is pretty large, but again, we need this for the calibration also have a bunch of boards here in the background. I just have like a bunch of the exact same ones, but also just traditional checkerboards. We have all the information down here at the bottom with the columns, rows, the square size and so on. And then we have these Aruka markers, which is basically just used for high quality camera calibration. When we're doing camera calibration, we want to get the intrinsic parameters of our camera. Could also be the extrinsic parameters if we have multiple cameras and so on that we want to calibrate. Could be a stereo camera. We can do pretty much everything with the camera calibration software. So this is pretty much the board that we're going to use. You just need to put the board up here in front of your camera, capture a bunch of images, throw it directly into the software. You can calibrate the cameras, verify the results download them, use them in your own applications and projects. So this is really easy. Instead of spending hours setting up the code, verifying the results, generating images and so on, we can now just do it with a few clicks. And also these high detail and also high quality calibration board, it also helps significantly. Just some minor differences, even when we're talking about millimeters, it makes a huge difference when we're talking about camera calibration. So yeah, these are the boards. Let me just pull some of the other ones over from the back here. So we have different materials, but also different types. We also have a checkerboard. So these are basically just some of the examples and samples that I got in the first chunk. Again, we have pretty much everything. We also have the logo on the back of the boards. I can just put it up here in front of the camera. So this is the logo. I'm going to show you the website in just a second. So it's just a very simple Shopify website. Let me just try to find one of the traditional ones. So here we have one of the traditional ones, which is just a checkerboard. There we go. Let's pull up the checkerboard. So just a very traditional checkerboard. This is in a different like some hard foam. One of the advantages with these calibration board is also the glare. So basically just the surface of the boards. We don't want to have any reflections. We can see that I have my headlight up here. We don't really get any reflections in the checkerboard. We don't want that when we detect each individual corner and use that to do our camera calibration. Because when you want to do high quality camera calibration, it all comes down to even pixels and millimeters. So these are the boards. Let's jump straight into it and see the software and also the website. So first of all here, I built a simple Shopify website where we have all the calibration boards, but also the software describing everything. We have some blog posts going over the details. I have tons of videos here on the channel covering the code and so on. But basically just how it works, what camera calibration is, what it is used for and so on. But this is basically the website. So we have the boards here, $150 per checker board. These are forward aluminum boards, which is very high quality boards. And you basically just need a single board. You need the camera calibration software. And then with a few clicks, you can calibrate your camera and you only need to do this once for every single camera that you want to use in your computer vision applications and projects. So this is very common that you want to do this as the first step because we can undistort the, the images. Often when we're dealing with lenses, we will get some barrel distortion. We won't have straight lines in the boundaries of our images, but we can actually like, do that with camera calibration. So we just have the boards. We have the camera calibration software here. We can go inside that one. We also have some details about calibrator. So here the name is basically just camera-calibrator.com. Very simple, very easy. Let's go in and take a look at the software. So right now here we have the calibration software, recent development for a company, so commercial 
uh, use. If you also have an individual, non-commercial and also a commercial license. If you're a company who wants to use this in production and for acts like commercial stuff. Could also be that you're in early research and development phase for your company and you can go with this license. You can also add a bunch of quantities here depending on how many licenses that you need. But again, most often you probably just need a single one. You just need to do this a single time and you're good to go. But even though you have 10 cameras which are the same, you still need to do camera calibration on each individual one because just a small change and they will always be a minor difference in every single camera even though it's the same just from manufacturing so we need to calibrate each individual one of them for the best precision in our computer vision algorithms and projects so here we can see a preview of the software but i'm going to show you that in just a second you can read about the different key features user for the interface very easy to use it's just a few clicks you need to specify the parameters to so take the board throw the board into it here with all the parameters they are specified in the bottom of the board and you're good to go. We even get some example code at the end that you can use directly. You can just download the calibration data. We get a Python example for single camera. We both have pinhole, but also if you have a fish eye lens, we can also do camera calibration with that. We just specify it in the drop down menu, Python, C++, code examples for everything, single camera and also a stereo camera. So this is pretty easy, pretty simple. We have the calibration software and we also have the boards. So let's just go in and take a look at one of the boards. So this board here is pretty standard and more than fine for probably like 95% of the cases. If you have some custom solutions, custom boards that you specifically want, if you want to do some more complex things or specific things with your camera, could be that you have very low resolution or some other specifications, definitely reach out to me and we're also able to do some custom solutions, but also build projects on top of it. So you can build whole computer vision pipelines, help you out with that and so on as well. Buy what I will pay, add to cart directly, key features and also the product specification. So this is 600 by 424 millimeters. You can see the thickness, number of rows, squares and so on. So this is basically just what we need to specify inside of our software. So yeah, we have the calibration, boards, custom solutions. You can go and read about that. Reach out to me directly, contact us or throw an email. We have a blog post as well where you can go and read a bit about camera calibration, what should it be used for? We have the JSON output from camera calibration. I specify and explain every single parameter from the software, how you can understand camera calibration parameters, why you should perform camera calibration, choosing the right calibration board, if you should go with a Cheruco board, or you can just like get away with a standard checkerboard. So all of that is covered inside these blog posts, but I'm going to create videos about it as well, where we go into details with all the calibration parameters in the other videos that I have on the channel is basically just covering camera calibration in general, high level features, high level parameters as intrinsic parameters, distortion parameters and so on. But we also have a ton more, especially when we're talking about stereo vision. So this is the web shot that I have. Let's now go in and take a look at the app. So right now I've just opened up the app. You'll get access to this after you have bought a license. We specify the calibration type. I'm going to create another video where we do a whole pipeline. So how we can take images. I'm also going to add features in here where we're using WebRTC and so on to connect your cameras directly in here. There are some security protocols and so on that you need to take care of. Um, connect to it, you need to use some external hosting and so on, basically just do a live stream. So as you're doing with it with Twitch, YouTube and so on, they use different protocols and also just to stream and have a secure stream running directly from your computer to a web server. You can run this on local and so on and it is no problem, but once you need to run it on the internet, pull a live stream from your cameras, could be an RTPS stream, video file, video file is already covered, but if you have a webcam, RTPS, RTPS stream, IP camera and all of that. It can be streamed to this web application as well. You can pull the images, directly generate them in here, cal calibrate your camera and you're good to go. Right now we have single camera, stereo camera, but you can like take an arbitrary number of cameras as well. And I'm going to add functionality to that over time. Select stream type, upload images, video file, also have the functionality. I'm just working on the last parts of that for the live streams, RTPS streams, IP cameras, USB cameras, pretty much just all of that. You can drag and drop images directly in here. If you choose a stereo camera, you need to both upload the left and also the right images. I'm very excited to get the streams up and running, upload images or a video file. Right now we can just go with the images. 
camera calibration after you have uploaded the images you can go ahead and choose the type as well again single camera stereo and now we also cover both a standard lens so that will be a pinhole camera model and also a fish eye lens so that could be cases where you want to have larger field of view you want to use a fish eye lens but you still need to be able to correct a bit for the distortion or just get the camera parameters so we choose checkerboard or cheruga board. If you choose the cheruga board, we also need to specify some other parameters. The board that I'm using has these default values, so we don't really need to take um, care of that. Don't even need to change it. Just hit calibrate directly. We can also run sub pixel optimization, marker size, square size of the Ruka markers. The good thing about the Ruka markers is that we will assign a unique ID to each individual one of them. We can choose that Ruka dictionary. Right now, this is just the default one. So why do you like five by five or four by four? These are just for the individual ones. So once we have uploaded images, we can just hit calibrate camera and we're good to go. At the end here, we can download the calibration data and also see the examples both for Python with a single camera and the standard model. Single camera, stereo camera, standard model for the pinhole camera model and also fisheye lens. All of that is covered for these examples, both in Python, but also in C++. So you can use it directly in your applications and projects. So right now, let's just go inside our calibration images. Just drag in some images. I've just captured some images here from my webcam on my MacBook, just of these, this board that I showed you guys before. So right now, I've uploaded the images successfully. Let's go inside the camera calibration. We have a single camera, standard model, and this is the Charuga board with the default parameters. Let's now just go down and choose run calibration. So right now I'm just going to choose this one. Run calibration, it's going to run all the software and we should get the results pretty much instantly as we saw here. So it took only two seconds. We have calibrated the camera and we're good to go. Even though I'm explaining it here, you can take your images, drop it in, calibrate it, download it. Probably takes like 10 seconds in total. So here we see that we have each individual one. So they have an ID. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That could be used if you want to do post estimation. Could be that you have a board, multiple cameras that is looking at the same board at the same time. Then you can actually like get the relation how are all these cameras connected to each other. If you want to do like a multi view camera system. So now we get a drop down menu. We can choose all of these um, images here that we have used for calibration choose each individual one of them and we will be able to see the detections. It is very essential that we have high quality calibration boards because we're going to use the information of these corners detected and then it runs through those algorithms. We can probably see here at the board at the borders like these lines here are not perfectly straight and we might need some minor distortion here that we need to undistortion that we need to remove to make it 100% perfect, but this is not a bad lens at all. Compared to if you have a fish eye lens, it will be very distorted here and we will more have like these rounded lines. We get the camera matrix, looks pretty cool, pretty much good to go. Like we can see that this is a full HD camera. We get the distortion coefficients, you can download them directly here, but they will also be inside the JSON file. Now we get the reprojection error. So one of the most important things when we do camera calibration is to verify the results. Look at what are the good camera calibration images. Should we maybe go in and delete some of the images to increase the accuracy and also the quality of our camera calibration. And this is one of the most important things when we do camera calibration and also what take the longest time, especially if you want to do all of it by yourself. Reprojection error, we have a reprojection error of 0 0.01 so that is very low and we can even see that we have this image 7 which is pretty much just dragging it up significantly compared to the average so we probably have a lower average if we just remove this image from our calibration often you will need like 5 10 images once you get over that it doesn't really add that much any longer so again, this is pretty cool. We also have a 3D visualization. If we scroll a bit further down, it is basically just plotting all these boards relative to the camera. So right now we just have the camera and then these boards are relative. So I'm not moving it that much around in the image frame. When we do our camera calibration, especially with our Cheruka markers, is that we just cover as much as possible of the image frame and it will take care of it. Like again, we can see that these calibration results are very good. We can just scroll through some of the examples here and see all of the different boards. There we go. We can see it's pretty much instantly just visualize the results. Just go through them manually see, okay, how does it look? We can see that this board seven has a higher reprojection error. Let's go and take a look at that one. There we go. Can't really see any differences here, but again, the calculations are a bit 
off. So the reprojection error is basically just because we know the position of each individual marker, each individual corner. We know the real world distances with our square size of 30 millimeters, marker size of 22 millimeters. Then we have our optic points, which is our real world 3D points. When we reproject that, back into our image frame, we can then compare that together with our image points, which is the detected corners. Then when we do that, we will get an error, which is our reprojection error, and we want to minimize that as much as possible. If we have a reprojection error of zero, it basically just means that we are able to perfectly project the 3D points down to our image plane. We will not be able to do that if we have a lot of distortion in our images. So that's why we need to go in and understore our image. But it could also just be that we don't have a good enough calibration board or not good enough calibration software. And that is going to basically just destroy our camera calibration and it can't be used for anything, at least if you want to have very high accuracy systems. So this is all the all the software is doing like it's not really taking too long to just go through it and verify it we can always reset the calibration but now we're good to go let's go down and download the data and also just see the examples so right now we have the standard camera model single camera let's download the calibration data it's going to download to your computer let's open it up and take a look at it there we go so it's basically just this json file we get the camera matrix the exact same one as inside the software let me just zoom in a bit so we have the camera matrix, looks good. We also have the focal length in the X direction and in the Y direction, the optical center, distortion here, so that it's also the exact same values. And we have our rotation vectors and also the translation vectors for our uh, calibration board. So this is pretty much what we're visualizing inside um, inside the 3D visualization tool. Could be useful if you have multiple cameras set up and so on. So once you're downloaded the camera calibration JSON file, you're going to use the Python examples, C++ examples, and you're good to go. We just need to call this undistort function. It undistorts the image. We crop it. Of course, if you have a lot of distortion, it is going to crop the image more, uh, but it depends on your camera, your lens, and also the, the distortion coefficients. After we've done that, we can save the results, and this is pretty much where you will be able to use it in your own applications and projects. Then we can both extract the matrix, the camera matrix, the distortion parameters. We have an undistorted image. We're good to go. We can feed that into an AI model, into our computer vision system with all the traditional computer vision algorithms, and we'll get way higher accuracy. Let's imagine that we want to calculate the area, something, measure, line, and so on. We can't really do that if we don't have good enough image. So we want to be able to see the world as it is without too much distortion and also just most of the computer vision algorithms, they need the intrinsic parameters of the cameras to be able to do pretty much anything, especially if we're working in the 3D world. So how we go from 2D to 3D with our camera calibration. Definitely go and check it out if you have any feedback, any features and so on that you want to have added. Could probably like be nice if you guys wanted to con contribute to it as well. Any ideas, I'm more than happy and welcome for all of it. This is very helpful if you're not familiar with camera calibration, have it done in tons of times, and also just for my future videos, I don't have to spend time pulling the code, setting up the code, verifying results and so on, I can just use this tool. So thanks a lot for watching this video here, guys. I hope it has given some insights into the new side business that I'm doing. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning. If you want to get into an AI career, you should definitely check out my AI career program. The program is basically all my experiences from how I went from an average student to where I am today. The program consists of three main categories. We have my technical courses, my personal branding course, and then the AI career path. We have a whole community in there with like-minded people supporting each other. And every week we will have weekly live calls where I support and help all of you guys. Over time, more courses, resources, code templates, and so on will be added to the program. You will give lifetime access. So the sooner you join, the more value you will get for your money. Let me help you take your AI career to the next levels.